This is Walker. And in the next few minutes, I will be showing you exactly how you can set up Walker to be working quite like this, as well as a special command that makes it much faster to launch and open. Now, to actually get started, first thing you're going to have to do is open this website here. Basically, it's a GitHub repo. Okay, it's Walker's GitHub repo. So you're just going to have to go to this repo over here. If you look for Walker GitHub app launcher, you should be able to find this as the first link. So this one by Abens 1267 is the one you're looking for. And this app, okay, as you can see here is built using GTK4. If I compare and contrast this to my existing app launcher, which is written using GTK3, okay, this one's Rafi, as you can see, it looks slightly different. In fact, this is another one of the menus that I have right now. This is another Rafi menu that I've constructed along with this as well, like this calculator that I've got going on. I also have another menu, which is for switching the layout of my waybar. That's great. Now, if I compare that to Walker, this is what Walker looks like. It seems a little bit more polished, okay? But that extra polish doesn't come for free because theming in GTK4 is a needless hassle, right? They just make it much more difficult than it has to be. But anyway, let's set this up and I will show you what I'm talking about when it comes to theming GTK4. Now, first thing you're going to have to do if you're on Arch Linux is just install Walker itself, right? So if we look for Walker, we find that there's a couple of AUR applications here that are of most interest to us, which would be Walker Git and Walker Bin and Walker. Now, you want to install the bin version because you only want to install the binary. You don't want to compile the entire program from scratch. You will, you're pretty sure you have other things to dedicate your computer's resources to. So don't worry about installing, just compiling this from scratch. You can install it using walker-bin. Now, along with that, we also have to install a couple of other dependencies. Now, Elephant is one of those dependencies. Elephant, if we take a look at what that's supposed to do, Okay, it is basically something related to data sourcing. Yeah, so it is a general purpose data source and executor. Now, for this too, you're supposed to get the bin version so that you can pre-install the binary. You can just get the pre-installed binary, a pre-compiled binary rather, instead of having to compile it yourself. Okay, now once you do that, okay, so after you just type in walker bin, elephant bin, there are two more dependencies that we're going to have to install. Now those are going to be the extra providers. So we're going to have to install elephant provider list and elephant provider, elephant desktop applications, basically. Now, when you try to install elephant bin, it's most likely going to prompt you and ask you to install all of its dependencies as well. So that's not something you're going to have to worry about. But in case only these two apps are installed after you finish running the command, all you have to do is just run this command. So that would be a dash s elephant provider list dash bin and elephant desktop applications bin so you want to get the binary version for both of these apps and once you do that you should be able to run walker like so now chances are pretty much all the time you're not going to be able to get this menu in the same way okay without having to configure it a little bit and not just that but you're also going to see this message. So if I kill all dash nine Walker and run Walker again, it's going to give you this warning about the G application service not running. So it says, make sure that it's running. So it's basically a background service, which makes launching the app much faster. Now, if I try to launch without the daemon running, it's not going to launch basically because the command that I'm using in order to launch it is completely different from Walker. It's in fact an NC command, right? This is what's going on here. If I try to run Walker alone, it works, but then it's much slower. Now watch what happens when you actually run the G application service. Okay, when you run it this way, and now you try and run Walker, it's pretty much almost instant. And if you run it with this socket method, right, it's practically instant, right? It's even faster than Rafi because this is working on a client server basis using sockets and whatnot. So let's Make sure that this G application service is sent to the background. We can just type walker dash dash G application service ampersand disown. So what this does is basically takes the program, forks it to the background, as we say, 
and then gets rid of it from this current terminal. So if we close this terminal, the app is still going to be running in the background, but then is going to exit when we log out of the session. Now, after that, what we're going to have to do is make sure to put it inside of our auto start file if we have one. So if we go to config, hyper modules, autostart.conf. And by the way, this is not going to exist on your machine by default. This modules folder, I basically created it in order to take one file and then split it into multiple files, which makes handling the files and maintenance of them so much easier. It's basically something called modularity. In fact, that is exactly what I teach you how to set up inside of the program, which is the first link in the description. I also teach you how you can make fantastic custom themes, such as like this one, where all you have to do is just type whichever theme that you want, basically choose a theme from a list of already pre-made themes, okay? And watch your entire system adapt to that particular theme. Not just that, but then there's also a wallpaper switcher built in. So if I wanted to switch the wallpaper, okay, I could do that just as easily with this wallpaper switcher here. So I could change the wallpaper to something like geometry and then watch the entirety of my wallpaper as well as my theme change. Set up like so. So if I wanted to change the wallpaper here, I just have to pick a different wallpaper and there you go, it would change. That is exactly what I teach you how to do inside of the program, which is the first link in the description. So if you want to learn how to make something like this, you can go ahead, click the first link, and I'd love to teach you how. And the best part is that I actually teach you how to make something like this using a simple three-step process instead of basically forcing you to go through 283 different YouTube tutorials, just like I did back in the day, right? When I first got started rising Hyperline, I wasn't able to make anything even close to this. But through just trial and error, sheer trial and error, and four years of me being in this game and then having done it for quite a while, I've managed to figure out how to make stuff like this so that I can use my setup to its maximum. In fact, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if we just go inside system reforging over here in this section, if I scroll down here, you're going to see that there's a theme switches module, which is two hours long. So in this two hour long module, as you can see here, I cover what theme switchers actually are, the different kinds, Basically, there are two kinds of theme switchers, right? One where you can extract the colors from your wallpaper and then use those colors in order to theme the rest of your system, or one where you basically have to set up a bunch of custom themes yourself so that you can switch between them at will. Those are the two different variants of theme switchers, and I show you how to set up each of those on your own. And yeah, basically, that's what these two are saying. Now, if I go all the way to the end, as you can see here, this is me explaining the code along with setting up the actual custom theme switcher. So if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description right now and check it out. Now, let's go to the auto start. And what we want to be doing here is just put walker as a comment, exact once, okay? This is going to be walker dash dash g application service. We want to start the service every time we log in. Now, I'm not going to be doing this because my app launcher is still going to be Rafi and not walker. I still haven't covered why that is, so just hold on, I'll tell you. But first, we'll make sure that Walker is actually working. Now, with this application running, right, with the service running, if we type in Walker, as you can see, it works. Now, for whatever reason, it doesn't work right now because Elephant is not running. So if we type Elephant, which is the data source thing, and if we run it again, oops, does not seem to be working. Well, now here is where you see a little bit of live troubleshooting because what I am going to attempt to do is trying to fix this. There you go. Waiting for elephant, right? Now let's make sure elephant is running. Now if we type walker, there you go. So it's basically elephant, which is the data source thing that deals with all of the other backend stuff as well that wasn't running. So you have to make sure that that's running. And you can just send this to the background. And now if we type walker, yep, it works. Now we just have to type in G application service. Okay, and now if I try to open it with the keybind, it's lightning fast. Great, now let me show you how to set up that keybind. Here it says, if the service is running, you can either open Walker with this command, or for an even faster launch, you just have to make a socket call with OpenBSD Netcat. That's what you're doing here. Now they also mention that the only downside to this socket call is that you cannot pass any sort of arguments to Walker like you would here. So for example, the most likely argument that you would pass is something like dash dash theme, you would pick something like hmm, config, walker, themes, any one of these themes, I could choose something like Everforest, and this is the Everforest theme. 
Okay, that theme's actually not found, so I'll have to go in there and pick something like this. You get the idea, right? This is what you're supposed to be doing if you're using the program name itself. But when we go inside of the keybinds file, look for walker, right? We cannot exactly pass in any sort of command line arguments just because of the way that this netcat command works. We're just accessing walker through a socket and not through the actual program name itself, which means that we can't pass any sort of command line arguments to it. It's a bummer, but if you want faster launches, you can just use this command and bind it to your binds.conf, which is what you see here. So mod shift D is going to execute walker with this socket method so that it's even faster. But for this to work, you have to make sure that the service is running. That's it. Now we have a bunch of key binds, then we have config and theming, which is the part you're most likely waiting for. Now, inside of the config, you just have a pretty simple TOML file, which you can right click, save page as, save as, and then you just have to put this inside of config walker. If I show you that, config walker is a config.toml as well as the themes. So if we just open the config.toml here, yeah, you have a couple of different options. Right? The ones you're most likely going to be using are actually the theme one. You have a bunch of different providers based on what you want Walker to do, right? whether you want it to function as a calculator. In fact, let me just show you the different modes that Walker has. So here, yeah. So these are all the different features. You can either use it to display desktop apps like you do with this, a calculator, file browser, command runner, web search, clipboard history, so on and so forth. Right? Basically, you can do a lot of stuff. Now, Whilst you can do that, that's not something that you can't do without, I mean, with Profi either. Profi can do quite the same things. It just needs a little bit of scripting in order to get it done. And by default, this config file is going to work just fine for you. So don't go about changing anything here, except this theme one, which I will show you how to configure. Now, if I go to config walker again, here inside of themes, I have already made a bunch of different folders that contain style.css files which dictate how this is supposed to look. Now, bear in mind that here I've only changed the colors. I haven't changed any part of the actual layout itself, right? So if you take a look at Rafi here, I've changed the layout to the part, point where you see a grid. But then for Walker, I haven't done that. I've only changed the colors. Now, the reason why is because in order to change the layout for a GTK4 app, you're supposed to mess with XML files. Now, you can do that, but then it's just too much hassle. When Rafi is already existing, okay, it already has Wayland support, and when it looks this absolutely fantastic, there is just no reason for you to pick Walker. If you wanted it to be a little faster than Rafi, right, maybe 0.2 milliseconds, and you really care about that, then perhaps you could switch to it. But for me personally, given how hard it is to theme, and me wanting to have a custom theme, sort of like this one, on my own setup, I don't see why I should bother switching to Walker at all. That's not to say that I haven't tried configuring it. As you can see here, I already have a bunch of themes. <clears throat> but still, let me show you how you can use these themes for yourself. Now, what I've done here is if I open Rose Pine, it's in themes, Rose Pine, style.css. Now, here I have defined a bunch of colors. That's fantastic. By default, these colors are actually Kanagawa's colors that are predefined inside of a style.css file that's hidden away somewhere on the file system. In order to hijack that and make sure that your own file, your own, what do you call it, colors are there, right? You just have to make sure that you're using a custom theme. Now, how this works is I define the colors here, and then each of these little style.css files inside of each of these folders is referring to this core.css. So if I open core.css, you can see that the core of the theme itself is over here along with all the references to each of the particular colors that are inside of every single folder here. That's it. That is how this is supposed to work in principle. But because Walker is just what it is, right? And because there is no functionality for including different files inside of the config.toml file itself, right? Making it comply with a custom theme switcher is easier said than done. It can be done through methods like symlinks and whatnot, but I just don't see the point when theming it is just such a pain in the ass. And not just that, but then if I decided to switch the theme, okay, let's say I went to, to switch the theme to something like Everforest, okay, now unless I reload, unless I reload, unless I kill Walker and then end up reloading it, okay, 
I'm not going to be able to see any changes in the theme whatsoever. That's a bit of a bummer as well, which is another reason why I personally will not be switching to Walker. That's it. Now, if I were to show you how to use a theme, okay, that would be using Walker dash dash theme config Walker themes. Come on, themes. Here we pick, let's say something like noir. Okay. Now it says theme not found. Let's make sure it points to the style.css. Okay. It says theme not found. That's no problem. Seems like we'll just have to check out what's making this happen. Now, if we open config walker config.toml, you see rose point here, right? So if we change this to default, and then try it again. Okay, it still doesn't work. This is what I mean by Rafi. I mean, Walker is just needlessly hard to theme. Like, there is absolutely no reason why any app, okay, should be this hard to theme, especially when it comes to GTK, because it feels so much easier to theme. And not just that, but then the layouts look absolutely beautiful as well. But that is a story for another day. So, so far, we have covered how you can install Walker and how you're supposed to make it work with this netcat command for accessing it with sockets, starting the service, auto starting it as well. So the next time you log into your computer, it works. And of course, launching Walker itself, along with the keybinds that we covered earlier. That is how you can use this. And if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, right, where all you have to do is just choose a custom theme between a list of different themes that you've already configured, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description because there I show you exactly how to do this without you having to watch 58 different YouTube tutorials without learning a single thing. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.